So hello and welcome back to our podcast. Today we are shooting from Chinese city Tianjin, one of the biggest in the world, if you didn't know before. And obviously I don't speak Czech today, I'm speaking English right now, you might have noticed. Uh, I hope you don't mind, especially if you are from Czech Republic, but we put the subtitles there so you should understand everything we say. Yeah. And so my guest today is uh, from Canada, his name is Jesse Zenchuk. So Jesse, can you tell us like your life story in one minute or less? Yeah, okay. Um, grew up in Vancouver and yeah, I moved to, I traveled a bit and then I moved to China to teach English in mm. 2011, I think. And then I came here and I met my wife, like she wasn't my wife when I met her, obviously, yeah. made a band and did lots of stuff. We opened a bar together. It was really cool. We, yeah, played in different cities and um, now I'm trying to focus more on music mm, and I'm happy living in Tianjin with my beautiful wife. Oh, I see. <laughs> By the way, <clears throat> so what initially, initially, what was the reason for you? Like moving from such, uh, mm. you know, rich country to kind of developing country? Yeah. So I have a, a very, very clear reason. Mm. Um, my whole, not my whole life, but since I was maybe 16, I discovered music mm -hmm. and it being such an amazing outlook for creativity. Yeah. And it was just so important to me. I even like considered like getting myself like, um, what's it called? Committed into an asylum, mm -hmm. like pretending to be crazy just so I didn't have to work, just so I could like write lyrics and poetry uh -huh. and make music all day, every day. But, you know, I wasn't that crazy. Yeah. Um, so I decided coming to China is perfect because you can teach and work a very little bit. Mm -hmm. You can't have to work 40-hour weeks mm. just to pay the rent. Here you can work 10-hour weeks, pay the rent, plus have some left over, and I can make music all day. Oh, yeah. So that's, that's why I came. Yeah, that's also my answer to the people who are asking me why I moved to China yeah. and not to Germany, for instance. Yeah. Like, I would say... the. Like the main reason for foreigners moving to China is that the life is easy here. Yeah, right? the leisure time, I think. Uh, and also you got, if you are a foreigner, let's, let's be honest, you get quite a lot of money for not yeah. much work. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, like, are you playing, planning to stay here for the rest of your days? I have uh, no idea. You have right no now, idea. what is in store, I just am, I'm going to keep working on music and mm. hopefully keep getting better and keep enjoying my life. Mm. Yeah. yeah, too bad there was no YouTube, right? Back then, you could be, you are the nation of Justin Bieber, aren't you? Yes, <laughs> you could make yourself famous on YouTube, but so whatever. Yeah. Okay, so that would be short introduction, and as I mentioned before, you already know it, but I will repeat it. So this segment of videos basically shouldn't be primarily about linguistics or literature, mm -hmm. even those, even though those are the main two main topic mm -hmm. of this channel, mm -hmm. but. I just wanted to use the opportunity that I've got here in Tianjin, that I've got so many friends from all around the world, so we can talk about all the different issues like the today's world is dealing with. Global issues. Yes, global issues. And we will not be talking about China that much, mm -hmm. even though it might be surprising, but I think the reasons are obvious for most of our viewers. And uh yeah and like the main idea behind this segment of videos those podcasts with my foreign friends in china would be talking about topics or issues which i've been thinking a lot about recently but i haven't kind of made up my mind clearly like i'm open to be convinced mm. in both ways right like with another friend of ours we've already discussed the pro-choice and pro-life arguments and other things and so today i would like to take a closer look at the i think one of the hottest topic of today's mm -hmm. world which would be the freedom of speech and censorship mm -hmm. and some like relative topics to this yeah. like hate speech yeah. and other things restrictions on uh, free speech mm -hmm. All right so my reasons for that I, why I I would like to explain this first, mm. because first of all, obviously it's got it has a lot to do with linguistics actually, with pragmatics and all the other uh, field of, of linguistics, mm -hmm. which also deals with this. Mm -hmm. You know, as the old cliche says, language constructs reality. 
Yeah, if you're not a post-structuralist, yeah, I guess. Post-modernist, yeah. yeah. But they would also agree with this at the end of the day, I think. In most yeah. regards. And the other reason is that I think that all around the, the planet, like Canada, nowadays, mm -hmm. I think that in Canada this is like very important topic right now. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely. So, but... So I know you didn't know the topic before we started, basically. Mm -hmm. But like, what would be your basic opinion on freedom of speech? Like, should it be like in the United States? Should we have first amendment, like allowing freedom of speech, or should there be some restrictions on it? I think um, there shouldn't be restrictions. Mm -hmm. um, but I think also for the greater good and for the benefit and safety of people, I feel like if we allow people to maybe um, make little militias mm. and get lots of followers and fill their ideas with these radical violent beliefs and, mm. and we are allowing people to say, oh, this is how you make a bomb and um, demographic X is evil mm -hmm. and You should kill them. You must kill them. It's your duty as mm -hmm. demographic Y. Yeah, okay. Well, now those are two different topics. Because if you would really say, um, like, we need to kill the demographic something. Yeah. I think now you are not committing hate speech or okay. you are not... Cool. Now, because at this point, yeah. it's actually called to violence, isn't it? Which is a kind of different, different topic. Is it? I think so. If you say okay. you should... If it... Okay. Yeah. It, it, You know, it's called to action, it's called to violence, actually. But it's a word, like a call is still speech. Yeah, but it's... Okay, I should should have been more specific. Yes. Like, I should have said, should there be law, like, aiming on freedom of speech? Or, you know, should there be law which is saying what kind of speech I isn't think, allowed I anymore? Think, well, if... It depends what we're calling speech. If the mm. law is saying a call to violence, yeah. that kind of speech is not allowed anymore, yes. then yes, we It's should not. have a law that mm -hmm. says which kinds. Bec but those are two separate issues, because even in the United States, mm -hmm. where they have this first amendment, right? The freedom of speech amendment, okay. like is the basic basis of American culture, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. So they still have a law against call to violence, which is... So, you know, if so I... So if that's separate... Yes. Then I think... Mm -hmm. Because so you know in in states if I say I don't know this Natalia this fictional girl is an idiot mm -hmm. I'm totally allowed to do it yeah if I say okay guys if you kill her I will give you one hundred dollars yeah now I'm calling to to violence now, yeah now this is a crime obviously yeah right <clears throat> so if we're not talking about calls to violence mm -hmm. as a part of speech mm -hmm. then I think that free speech should be okay mm -hmm. generally without yeah. restrictions i like of course there are always going to be examples that mm -hmm. you can find yeah um but like generally mm -hmm. i think yeah yeah so because i don't know any other country but the united states mm -hmm. which actually have freedom of speech so i don't know about well actually i do know about canada but in czech republic for instance yeah. you cannot uh, kind of agree with holocaust for instance You, you, you cannot deny the whole. You cannot cause. deny it or yeah. agree with that. Yes. You cannot okay. say it was good and you yeah. cannot say it, it never happened. happened. Okay. Right. Like you're not allowed to say that. Yes. Yeah, I'll that's... It. It's like kind of sad that mm -hmm. that law has been implemented because I think that is... You know, like the, the rules behind that law, you know, like you're censoring, <laughs> criticizing... Like, people should be allowed to have opinions mm -hmm. and stuff. It's just such a, a pity that the world is how it is, that we had to make these rules that take mm -hmm. away freedoms just to, yeah. to curb some assholes mm -hmm. from being mm -hmm. yeah. too much of assholes. Yeah, I, yeah that actually is also what, what I think about that. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, you should allow people to... To, to embarrass themselves. Yes, definitely. If they are stupid, well... But the yes. other other side could say, well, obviously, th this law, I think, is the same in European Union, in Canada, 
you cannot deny Holocaust even in Canada, right? I you definitely cannot do it in well, European Union. So there's also like different levels. Yeah. So in Canada, I don't think you go to jail or anything for denying the Holocaust, but that doesn't mean you can't do it. Like practically, mm-hmm. you cannot do it. It's social suicide. It's political suicide. It's your uh-huh. careers. Well, in, in Czech Republic, I think you can spend two years in jail for... I don't uh, think... I, maybe we have that in Canada, but I've never heard of that in Canada I think before. you do have it. Okay. Um, I, That's interesting, then. Yeah. Okay. And, and so now, the I, I googled a bit. Okay. Or binked, sorry, China. <laughs> and I tried to find some, like, actual, not actual, like recent uh-huh. examples of this discussion uh, and some actions which happened and it was like important to discuss it. So like first uh, first instance I would like to talk about, mm-hmm. it actually happened in, in the United States, mm-hmm. that there was supposed to be a gay wedding. The birthday, no birthday cake, the wedding cake? Thing? No, ga- yeah, the wedding cake. Yeah. Right? And so the yeah. baker, he refused. Yeah, this is a it. great topic. Super yeah. great. So what do you think about that? Um, I I think it is um, very, very... Actually, we should explain it. Okay. Because, okay. Yeah. yeah. So the point is that in the United States, I think in Colorado, maybe? Colorado? I'm not sure. Maybe? Yeah. So the point is that the two boys who wanted to get married, they ask a baker to make them a wedding cake. Mm-hmm. But with those, you know, with two brooms, or how do you call them? Grooms. Grooms, sorry. <laughs> yeah. And he refuses. He refused to do it. Right? Yeah, and they took it to court. To court. And it kept going to higher and yeah. higher levels of mm, court. Yeah. and it was a very interesting topic because it got lots of people talking. And yeah, yeah, like lots of people that normally have one stance mm. maybe took another stance, and lots yeah. of people are just trying to understand this messy situation. And this shows us kind of that like our predefined beliefs, um, especially political ones. Mm are so like outdated and useless Mm. and like we love to like identify as left or right and like carry this little package of beliefs around with us Mm. but it's pretty useless and lots of people started to learn that when this happened it was pretty cool like the fact that it was so eye-opening yeah yeah. so so what is your opinion if you were the judge if i was the judge um well i i think the guy has the right to make cake Mm -hmm. like or not make cake Mm -hmm. I think he definitely has that right. Yeah. Um, and I think that wasn't the issue, if I remember, because when I was talking with my American friends about mm-hmm. it, um, that's I was kind of the other side. So it's hard for me to remember what they said for me to play their side. Yeah. It'd be much easier if you could. <laughs> but um, they said that wasn't really the issue. Okay. So. Um, and they said the issue was something more like how he was discriminating against them, like, mm-hmm. because of his beliefs? I don't know. Yes, I, because yeah. he was a Christian. Yeah. So, so he cannot, you know, he doesn't want to support gay marriage. Yeah. It's against his values, so... Yes. On the other hand, I think there's the same problem. Like, he refused to make a cake because they were gay. Mm-hmm. Right. It's a really, like... It's a stupid situation. Yeah. It's really dumb. Like, he shouldn't be forced to make a cake he doesn't want to make. Mm. That's for sure. But they should also be able to have a cake made for them. Yeah. It shouldn't matter whether it's two guys, two girls, or a guy and a girl, yeah. or whatever. Mm. It really shouldn't matter at yeah. all. So that guy, like the baker, mm-hmm. made the first mistake by refusing them. I think he was sucking. Um, and then, like, you know, mm. it's like Buddhist... Like, you know, like, you got to stop the bad karma oh, somewhere. I see. Uh, like, he was saying to his defense yeah. that, you know, at the same point, he wouldn't bake a cake, which Had would be swastika saying, on it. yeah, swastika, yeah. or even like, kill all gays. Yeah. So he, he was arguing that he yeah. didn't hate uh, gays. He just didn't want to support gay marriage because it's, a, it's again, his religious belief. Yeah. And now, th- from his point of view... If you are pushing him yeah. to, to bake this cake, yeah. you are actually pushing him to kind of put his religious beliefs behind. Yeah. Right. Which you also cannot really do, right? Well, because he should have freedom. Yeah. Freedom. And like, if he's not hurting anyone, 
Yeah. Like, I'm. that's what I'm trying to say. Like, he should have been okay. He should have, mm. like, grown up a little bit, opened his mind a little bit more, mm. and spiritually developed mm. in the moment. And, yeah, okay, you're right. You guys aren't so bad. I'll make you a cake. But he didn't do that. Mm. Okay, so he made the first mistake. And then they didn't get this asshole to turn into an un-asshole mm. or a non-asshole. Mm. So then they... Sh- Probably, if I was them, I probably would have been like, screw you, mm. and went to a different guy. Yeah, that would be my point. Yeah. I mean, okay, this is gonna sound silly, but I think it's not that difficult to even find a gay baker. <laughs> this industry is kind of... Okay. Right? Okay. So, yeah, I, I'm not sure about this issue, like what to think about that. I think all the straight bakers are offended on your YouTube. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sorry, bakers. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I mean, come on, there are like straight barbers, right? So, yes. Yeah. Yeah, but whatever. <laughs> right. No, but I think that with this case, like both left and right were confused. What to but think which about side it. to take, too. Yeah, yeah, right. Even like the extreme leftists who are yeah. like pro all the religion and you know, equality of everything, of mm-hmm. outcome and income and mm-hmm. whatever. I think they still had to decide what is. Like, who is the bigger minority? If the Christian or the gay couple? Yeah. All right. Yeah. And is it always just about supporting the biggest minority? Or, yeah. like, what are our values actually? <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's a very interesting topic. Mm. So this would be one case, but now another. Because now I think at this point I'm against any mm-hmm. restrictions on the uh, freedom of speech. Even though I can understand... Well, except for the first one. Except for calling for violence. Yes. Sure. Cool. But, and the main reason for it is... I mean, I can understand that you would say send to jail some, let's say, a radical imam whose, like, speech is on the edge of being called to violence. Yeah. Who is not See, s- that's the problem. Yeah. So, like, in a, a black and white binary world mm. where there's calls to violence and then there's speech that isn't calls to violence, it's so easy yeah. to draw an imaginary line. But real life isn't like that. Yeah. Everything is so, like, spectral. Like, everything mm. is like a spectrum. Yeah. And wherever we draw that line, it's, you know, it might have to move some days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can... Call to violence in metaphors. Yeah, right? what is calling to violence and what isn't? Yeah. And it's so hard to say. Yeah. On the other hand, so so yeah, that's one of the problems. Yeah. But big why, time. why I'm against, basically more against it, is the reason that I'm afraid that at one point, and I don't want to use slippery slope, right? Yeah. But at one point, you could end up in jail for a, telling a joke. Right. And the slippery slope works both ways, though, I think. Yeah. So at the same time, like, let's say in, in one timeline where we we let these laws snowball that way. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. You say a joke that's taken out of context and mm-hmm. you go to jail. But then if we take the slippery slope the other way, I guess, then people can, like imply mm. you go kill people mm. right and yeah. and then there's a genocide like there is every day like there's genocides all the time mm. and like well you should explain this genocide genocides all the time like all well, the time if, meaning like almost every day there like there's so many wars going on right now in the world okay. and well, what is your definition of genocide? Well, Usually it's a killing a group of people on the basis yeah. of their ethnicity yeah. or nationality, I guess. Yeah. Like, I think, like, there's been, I think there's been almost constant genocide, like, really? in Africa for the last, like, Probably. 50 years. Yeah, they've got yeah. those tribal there's wars, right? so, like, it's so far, and it's getting bigger and bigger mm. as big countries come help with their arms mm. and aid. Like, it's super, okay. I'm going to start swearing a lot, I think, so we should... Yeah, no Probably. Okay. But okay, so I think today we are dealing with the kind of the first world countries. We don't have genocides in North America or Europe, right? I think. In recent years. North America, not so much. Okay, in Europe, in Yugoslavia, in the beginning of 90s. Sure. Yeah, and but... like, I don't know. It depends like where you're talking about, I guess. Like, how far east and how far south you can yeah. go from Europe. To I'm talking, still... let's say, about developed countries. 
Okay. So let's say European Union, Canada, USA. Yeah. Some other rich European countries which aren't in the European Union, but you know Switzerland. Yeah. And so. Yeah. Yeah, but I get your argument that the slippery slope goes work, both ways. Goes both ways, right? Yes. But now the reason I mentioned going to jail for telling a joke yes. or making a prank. Yeah. Even, uh, this would be another case. Have you noticed this, like, affair with Count Dankula, this YouTuber? No. Okay, so I will try to explain. Okay. So Count Dankula. Okay. I mean, I, you can hear the joke with Dracula, yeah. right? Yeah. So he's a YouTuber. I think not very good one, not very successful one. Mm -hmm. But he made a joke or prank on his mm -hmm. girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Because he wanted to, I don't know, he was somehow angry about her. Mm -hmm. And so he took her dog, her doggy. Oh. It was this, it's Buck, is it called? P -W -G. Pug. Pug. Yeah, Pug. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, they're funny, right? <laughs> Dude, they're really funny. Yeah. Yeah, but what did he do? Oh, no. He taught the dog okay. to raise his right paw when, oh, when, okay. he, when, uh, when, he, when he said, you know, this Nazi SH okay. salute. And also, he made him kind of running around happily when he said, and now, uh, now, now I'm quoting, when he said, gas the juice. Okay. And so he did those two things to the dog, recorded yeah. it on camera, I put yeah. it on YouTube. Okay. So he was sentenced to go to serve, I think, one year in jail. Yeah. In prison. So this goes back to people being allowed to embarrass themselves and yeah. look like pieces of Yeah. Crap. Because, I mean, obviously, it's stupid. It's immature, it's, but it yeah. is a joke. Even though it's bad one, yeah. he didn't want gas the Jews. He didn't want. He didn't want to support Nazis. He just wanted to make his girlfriend angry. You know that. Yeah. But I think most fourteen-year-olds don't have two PhDs. You know, most like most ten-year-olds on YouTube aren't as media literate as you mm. are. Like, so yes, you know that. And I do, like, like, understand. I'm not saying it wasn't, like, way over, mm. like, over, like, too much, like, mm. draconian of them to sentence him for a joke like that mm. for so many years in prison or whatever. That seems a little crazy yeah. and, like, 1984-ish um, Orwellian or whatever. But, um... Like, he didn't have to say that joke. Mm. He knew better than to say that joke. He knew it was, Ill like, well, you just talked about how it's illegal in Europe mm -hmm. and in Canada, too, apparently, to say certain things, yeah, yeah. especially about, like, Nazism yeah, Holocaust and Holocaust. Yeah. So he knew all of that, yeah. and he still chose to push it. Mm. And, like, it would be different if maybe he was a foreigner or an alien or whatever mm. and he didn't know these rules mm. and these norms and he made a joke. He's experimenting, right? Yeah. And then he's like, oh, it's wrong. I'm sorry. I assume he apologized after or did I, he double down? I'm not sure. I think he didn't really apologize. Okay, I, I well, that's was, a whole nother... Yeah, I think he was. his defense was more about, you know, you are violating my freedom of speech. Okay, yeah. So, may so, maybe that's the reason why he wasn't just fine, but he was really sent to, to prison. Yeah. Maybe dead. Like, I think genocide can be funny if you're, like, privileged white person from, like, a developed, stable country. Mm. But, like, genocide is not a joke to lots of people. Yeah, but, you know, humor. Like, what's yes. humor? Like, you know, transcending the, all the shit happening in yeah. human history. It's very important. Humor is very yeah. important. And especially humor about those dark things. Yeah, it's it's very important. And as I mentioned before when we talked, in Czech Republic we do a lot of jokes about Holocaust. Yeah. Even though maybe you can say we, we can kind of do it because, like, basically every member of... At least, like, every family got at least one member who was killed. So, like, you're all victims, so yeah. you're allowed, so you're entitled to yeah, kind jokes. I don't know. Yeah. Obviously, I get that. You, you cannot do those jokes in Germany. That's another story, right? Yeah. But in Czech Republic, we do it. Yeah. And so, like, considering England and Czech Republic are part of the same country, basically, because European Union, it's kind of federation or confederation, right? I really don't want to, you know, live the day when... I will be 
at least fined for mm -hmm. saying stupid joke. Right. And I think you won't be unless you want to be. I think mm. that guy chose to be a martyr for free speech. Maybe. And that's his choice and that's his freedom. Mm. And he, you know, he was very free to do that. Yeah. And I think he, I don't know if he got what he wanted or not. It sounds like he's more famous now because he just had one more person hear about him. Yeah. Maybe some of your viewers never heard about him. So he yeah. is getting, I think, what he wanted, which was more fame for being an idiot. I'm rather sure that Google, uh, YouTube, you know, uh, destroyed his channel. <laughs> yes. So maybe it's a... Uh, maybe he changed platform, sword. right? Yeah. I don't know. Who knows? It's very interesting. So, yeah, your your question... Again? Should he go to jail? Should he go to jail? I think he should be allowed to repent. Mm. And he, if he chooses not to, mm. then I guess he's sort of putting his freedom in the mm. hands of the government, no matter how authoritarian or not they are. Mm. That's his choice as a free agent in this system. Mm. Like, it would be great if we didn't have these big power structures that controlled us, but also would it? Because this is like a a big historical debate. Like, um, I forget what it's called. Lock? I don't know. So basically, this big debate goes, like, it only goes back a few hundred years. But, like, the debate is about maybe pre-agricultural mm. societies and were they better or worse that's hmm. the debate was it paradise or was it like savage warfare constant war all the time like what type of paradise people dying usually in age of four because of something happening to their teeth but like so some people think that like a long time ago mm. like pre-agricultural peoples yeah. like had lots of leisure time and were very like happy and peaceful really Yeah, and then another argument is that it was constant warfare yeah. and battle. And also, like, pre-agricultural people, I think they were still being hunted down by wild animals. Um, not so much. So it depends where you are. Like, in Australia and North America, like, the we, like, got there late, so there was this mass extinction where we just killed all the predators uh. and everything. Maybe there's a few wolves running around. But, like, it was... Like, hunter-gatherers had a pretty... Like, they did not work 40-hour okay. weeks. They worked, like, 10-hour weeks. Mm. Like, the reason we came here, kind of. <laughs> yeah. But still, the life expectancy would be, like... Was a lot lower. 25, I would say. Yeah. 30, maybe, if you were lucky. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. But why did we start to talk forget, about this? I'm sorry. Oh, never mind. It's good. I learned something. Do you new. remember what we were talking about? If you can remind me, I can bring it back. We were talking about this uh, Nazi salute guy yeah, on YouTube. Yeah. And and uh, yeah, if he go to j if he should go to jail, and then yes. you say he didn't. Show oh, there we are. So is it good or bad that we have these big power structures controlling us? So you mean like? So that's power. what I'm saying. Depending on which argument, if we were peaceful before, then it is bad that we have these power structures controlling us. Mm. But if without these power structures, these nations controlling us we re revert back to barbaric savagery then maybe it is hmm. good that they're here and he's going to jail i see i but we don't know mm. and we can't really yeah. know maybe i don't know I, i remember some couple of months ago yeah actually in the elevator in this very building yeah you told me something about chimps right chimps that you were reading some articles Or about Barnabas. them yeah and yeah i think that they are The scientists, like the evolutionary biologist, or how do they yeah. call them? They quite often trying to use chimp behavior. Yeah. To find out how where the people like in this, you know, ancient yeah. pre-agriculture time. Yeah. And well, chimps they are beasts. They're quite violent. They're but violent. Bonobos. Mm, tribal. Huh? But bonobos are a lot less. Okay. And it's really interesting too because bonobos are matriarchal species where the woman oh, really? is in charge they have an alpha female it's very cool oh. and then the chimps have the alpha male mm -hmm. in charge and they're very violent yes yeah very violent and tribal and tribal I just yeah. read an article that they are very nice to each other yeah but if they see a member of other tribe mm -hmm. they are able to literally they're tear it to pieces yeah like and even within their tribe like there's always a power struggle yeah like if the if the top guy gets sick for a day then number two oh, yeah. might... <laughs> is waiting yeah yeah sure 
So, and I think the chimps are our closer relatives, aren't they? Um, well, I think we branched off. So chimps, bonobos, and us, we're all new and we're all the same age. We all uh. branched off of each other. Uh. Like, I don't know how many... Oh, I don't Years know. ago? Yeah. Nobody knows. Along, well, there's there's rough. There are estimates. some estimates, but it goes between It'd be like eight hundred thousand years ago. Yeah, but some people would go way more far away. Yeah. So it's one point five million. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe? I don't know. Mm. And there were other human-like kinds, right? Yeah. 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 Lots. No. Yeah. And only we survived. Hey. Yeah. yeah. With our power structures and. Yeah. <laughs> so, so is it good that he is going to jail? For that, is that like, so like, let's say like society, the like global society mm. is a, is a one being, right? And like, it's a kid mm. and the kid's naughty and you don't spank it <laughs> and it turns into a spoiled piece of shit, mm. right? Like so many criminals, they didn't really have a good like nature versus nurture thing. Like if you don't raise a kid good, he might turn into a big turd. Yeah. He needs... A bit of order, a bit of discipline, a bit of structure. Mm. Maybe not too much, because then he'll turn neurotic or whatever. But, so, I think that's kind of why that guy's going to jail. Mm. Because as a society, if we don't have a bit of control, a bit yeah. of discipline, a bit of order, a bit of respect, then maybe we will turn into a big turd. Yeah. But, maybe. do you see this happening? Like, Yeah, I think we're, as, as a... A uh, global society, the monoculture, the American international values, mm. globalizing. You know, like I think, ye, like yeah, you know, okay. like we're we're getting pretty narcissistic. We're getting pretty materialistic. We're getting vain. We're getting selfish. We're getting violent. We're getting we're getting everything. I think. Mm. Are we getting violent? I think so. In what sense? More violent than before. Well, like. Even so in cities, violence, in cities, so. like you have like um, cultural sync, no behavioral sync. Mm. So there was a really crazy experiment with rats in the rat city. I don't know if you know about the experiment. It's really creepy. Yeah. Go check it out. Um, this guy got this big like room, a mm -hmm. building filled it full of rats. Okay. So it was like a big rat city, mm -hmm. and they had these like behavioral sinks. Like they basically started to like devolve like mentally, mm. and they got super fucked up. Someone got super violent. Someone got super like neurotic. They all got super messed up and weird. And the same thing happens in cities with humans. Mm, yeah. Like the city makes you more cold. Violent is a strong word, but like it's very easy to see the difference uh. between. Yeah, less compassionate or how do you say? Yeah, you know? more apathetic. Yeah, uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, speaking of which, maybe that's the reason why they say that Canadians are so much nicer than Americans. Because we have so much land around yeah. us. Yeah. Do you think it's possible? I think it's possible. Or that's got something to do with that, at least. Yeah, our cities are not as dense as theirs. Yeah. Um, but also, America has lots of open spaces, mm. and it has lots of hospitality and nice people in those places. Sure. So that's even more evidence to yeah. we should not be like filling up the cities. We should be leaving the cities. Mm. I um I do strongly believe in like I do believe in technological advancement, big time, and education is so important. But degrowth, I think, is very important too. Like we're all so set on like growth mm -hmm. and economic growth mm. rather than like sustainable growth and mm. it's it's more than just like physically messing up the mm. environment it's also taking a soul a toll on our yeah. souls i think i like it. you use the word sustainable growth i think so many people are talking about it on the news every day yeah. but nobody really understands what it actually means all right Yeah, well, that's like, why sustainable growth is sort of like an optimistic hope. Yeah. The only thing sustainable would be degrowth, I yeah. think. And that shouldn't be such a bad thing. Yeah. But I... No, no go on. I, I think, like, degrowth has sort of been, like, stigmatized and demonized, kind of like communism in America, mm. right? It's a commie! Yeah, like, yeah. like McCarthyism. Like, right? Yeah, McCarthyism or whatever. Like... Mm. Degrowth should be a good thing that, like, you can't just keep growing forever, then you pop. Yeah. Like, normally, things, like, they they change. They're dynamic. They're, I don't know. I think we really need to 
slow down big time really in like mm, you mean in technologies or? Um, in economic growth uh-huh. so every country basically I think is sort of like totally focused on like their economic growth their GDP yeah. their whatever that's yeah. all they care about yeah. some of them pretend to care about other things too like Justin Trudeau everyone really liked him because he's like I care about all the good things I'm a great guy mm. and like and now people are starting to learn that he's just really good at telling you he's a great guy and taking pictures and stuff like that he's still making trying to get the pipelines built mm. to get oil spilled everywhere and make lots of money yeah. like, it's all anyone cares yeah. about and when he started he was like he was everywhere in the newspapers mm-hmm. right he did this gender correct uh, yeah, government mm-hmm. and like people from all different religions are in his government mm-hmm. and he proclaimed himself to be a feminist right so yeah, that's good everywhere. stuff that's all yeah. good stuff but yeah. the most important thing I think is this like greedy like fo- economic focus and he's still just as bad as mm. most of the other people in power so I, I got no idea about political situation in Canada so is he actually more like right leaning or left leaning or he's, centrist well he's supposed to be quite left uh-huh. I believe like he's supposed to be and that was his his thing mm-hmm. Like he's from the Liberal Party, I believe. Okay. Don't think he's NDP. I'm pretty sure he's liberal. Okay. It's supposed to be left, but like that's what I'm saying. Lots of people think like, oh yes, we're left, we're right, like we're conservative, we're liberal. But like we don't actually get to vote on trade agreements. Mm. We don't actually get to vote on anything economic that actually matters. Mm. We only get to vote on these little social issues that we're being like distracted with. Yeah. Like, hey, look at this wedding cake, guys. Argue about that, idiots. Mm-hmm. When we screw up the world more and get more money and get richer. Uh, so, so you think that Trudeau is just leftist when it comes to the social justice questions but when it comes to like world economy and ecology he's right leaning or i it's yeah like i i don't think left and right are very yeah, accurate no, it's, it's kind of, they say it's old terminology to know yeah else. yeah it's very outdated um, it doesn't work yeah. at all anymore uh, interesting. i think he's very much capitalist and not much of a environmentally minded yeah. And so let's get back to the what you were talking about before with the growth. So what, yeah. what would be the alternative for this sustainable growth? People leaving the cities, uh-huh. people being more sustainable, like on their own. Mm. Small town, it's very hard for a huge city to be sustainable. Mm. But there are lots of towns that are sustainable already. And there's like a, a big movement of small cities trying to like be sustainable both with their energy and with their economy mm. it's really cool there's there's quite a few movements lots in the uk i believe um of like these small towns that are super hippie we okay. would call them and so you mean like kind of the de- de- decentralization and things like that yeah and it's so like starting more settlements kind of or farm cities it doesn't have so um uh singapore is is i think going to be one of the new style mm-hmm. cities city states states definitely yeah. but like so they are like they don't really bother with voting in politics much because mm-hmm. they think it's a waste of energy like lots of countries do like i love freedom and i love the idea of democracy and democracy is very good for getting people from point A to point B and it and from point B to point C democracy seems like it may not be the the best way it it should be and it could be and I hope it is because it's it's really great I'm a very egalitarian person but um some countries now that are not bogged down by problems with democracy like with the free speech thing and mm. stuff like that like taxes If you could vote on paying taxes, everyone would vote to not pay taxes. Sure. We wouldn't have education, we wouldn't have roads, we wouldn't have sure. cops, and it turned to mayhem. So democracy sure. isn't always the answer for everything. If you look at it like with taxes, if you can vote on to pay taxes. Well, but not. you are talking about this direct democracy. Nobody has that, right? Yeah. Or is it called direct democracy? 
how do they call it in English? The thing you, they have in Switzerland, you know, when the really people are deciding on almost every issue. A direct democracy, direct democracy sounds right. right to me. I think only in Switzerland they've got something like that. Only in Is Switzerland it, can people actually decide about everything. about everything. Does it work well for them? I think actually, it, they still cannot decide about anything. Like it's pretty, you know, bureaucratic machinery behind that. Yeah, you need to get like one hundred thousand signatures that they will talk about this issue. And you know, I, I've never studied how it works, but it's not that easy. It's it's definitely not that the government would be asking the people to vote about everything. Like nobody, they would get tired, right? After a while, yeah, they wouldn't it's want very to inefficient. vote. Yes, right. So I think it's more like in cities that mm-hmm. they are voting like about what types of building shall we build? Yeah, shall we make a football stadium or opera? And let's decide this. I think it's really important, like, oh. for people to have dialogue and mm. and agree on things. But what I was trying to talk about was like Singapore. Mm-hmm. Is like degrowth is not the only answer. Singapore is growing, yeah. but it's like trying to do it very sustainably. Like they have so many vertical farms, and they're trying to do all the sustainable energy. Uh-huh. So they like, you know, lots of countries might start to model themselves at like. For the last 50 years, every country's been modeling itself after America. And look at U.S. right now. It's, like, kind of garbagey. Like, it's getting worse, and it's pretty bad. And it's really sad the whole world has modeled itself after it because they're like, oh, damn, that's the road we're going down. In what ways? You mean the situation that the nation is divided because of the presidential election? Or, like, in, in what ways it's America getting rubbishy or what word? Garbagey? Garbagey. In many ways, definitely socially is the easiest way to see it. Mm. Like the the divide is very obvious and unnecessary yeah. and it's it's quite violent. There's like so many like starving people not starving, undernourished people okay. there. And which is so crazy because there's so much food wasted all the time. Oh, yeah. Like that's so ridiculous. Yeah. There's like still like so much racism and hate and ignorance mm. and it's it's really really terrible yeah. i think and also the income in inequ- like just inequality yeah. like it is growing mm. and i don't think that's good and i don't know why every other country wants to model itself after a country where income is income inequality is growing i think but I guess that the GDP is growing as well, right? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it is. I think... I, I've never been to the US and I don't actually know many American people. But from what I read recently, I think that actually American economy is doing exceptionally well. Yeah, the economy is, but I think environment isn't... People aren't... Mental illness, drug oh, yeah. addiction, yeah. 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 shootings, yeah. violence... like. That's GDP is not everything. That's the whole sure. problem. Is everyone's like GDP is good. That's all that matters. It's yeah. like okay, but you know people tend to look at those things because it's easy to kind of how do you say mm, consume them. You know, like you get clear numbers. Yes. Like if you talk about the increasing it's number of or, you know of mental yeah. diseases and things like that, yeah, there's so many var- 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 variables. Is variables. It? Variables, right? Yeah. Like what type so of mental quantify. illness and yeah, right. So if you say okay, GDP is growing. Yeah, you can see cool. that. It's yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, variables! I hate the word. <laughs> Impossible to pronounce. Yeah. yeah. Good. Uh, can you check the time, please? Yeah. Um, oh, 47. We started at 57. 57. So it's 50 minutes. Oh, so okay. That's awesome. That's awesome, but I think we should stop it now. Okay. Because I need to check my memory card. See you next time. It was so fun. Thank you. Thank you.